started. Um, welcome to Tech Talks, everyone. I just want to thank everybody for joining us today for Zoom Room, fun with features and customization. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Jane Osler, and I am a business data analyst with the EMSC Data Center. I'm so excited to be your presenter today because it's always fun to hang out with our awesome EMSC program managers. And I love this topic. Um, it's where we can utilize new tools in familiar meeting spaces to make them a little more engaging for the people that we interact with. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. You can unmute your phone and ask a question. Um, or feel free to use the reactions icon in the menu um, to raise your hand. Braden is going to be monitoring chat today. And um, let's go ahead and get started. The monthly uh, challenge for October was to search and save a free or open source Zoom background online in either a JPEG or PNG format. And um, there's lots and lots of available websites, um, too many to choose from probably, but the ones that we're familiar with um, that we like to use for Zoom backgrounds are pexels.com, there's pixabay.com, uh, Canva, Adobe Express, which we've actually talked about in other tech talks, and just so much more. I'm gonna have Jane post those in the chat. So if you're interested in looking on any of those sites for Zoom backgrounds, you're welcome to take a look at those. Hope you were able to do that challenge. And today in the Zoom room, we are going to learn how to do several things. Um, first and foremost, we'll learn how to add or change a profile photo. Then we're going to learn how to add a Zoom background, and then we're going to explore how to create a custom avatar. And if you're interested at a sneak peek for what avatars look like, you can look at mine. Lots of the EDC staff have avatars as well, but I'm presenting with my avatar today, so that'll be a lot of fun. Um, but before we do anything, there are a few housekeeping items to be aware of in Zoom. Um, first, just note that I'll be demonstrating today based on the Zoom app on my computer desktop and not a mobile device. Um, that'll be a little bit different that um, you can play with on your mobile device. And the topics that we have today were chosen based on feedback we've received from managers just about what they wanted to learn. So um, if you have other ideas of things you want to learn about Zoom or other topics, feel free to reach out to me and um, share. So. We want to make sure that um, before we dive into anything, that Zoom um, is up to date. Um, we don't like to use antiquated versions of anything, and Zoom is only going to be as good as the version you're using. So we want to make sure that we're up to date. To check for updates in Zoom, uh, you're going to go ahead and log in. And your login may or may not look exactly like this. It might look a little bit different, but there's always a navigation bar after you log in. It'll say home or team chat, meetings, et cetera. And you can see on the far right of this uh, image here, there is a green icon with my initials in it. And that's where your profile is gonna be located. So if you click on that, you'll get a drop down menu. And what you want to click on is check for updates. And when you click on that, Zoom will let you know if you're currently up to date or it will let you know if there's a new version available. So I highly recommend that you install the latest version so that um, you're using Zoom in its full functionality. Something also worth mentioning before we get started is that sometimes it's a really good idea to create a folder to put Zoom backgrounds in, to put icons, to put things that you use that um, you know are accessories in Zoom. Um, my folder is called Zoom Video Backgrounds. I just know that anything that I want um, to add to Zoom or upload to Zoom is located in that folder. And I like to keep it separate from Zoom recordings. Um, Usually your computer will have a default folder that it will put Zoom recordings in. And recordings have several components to them. They have, you know, the actual MP4 recording that the that it's converted to. It'll have chat, it'll have text and audio file. So I just like to keep those separate. So um, consider just creating a folder for Zoom accessories that you can, you know, add things to when you're searching online. It's a lot of fun. Let's start by um 
talking about changing our profile photo. Um, you've all probably been in meetings where you've seen people that have profile photos when they turn off their camera that appear. Um, you can see them here today. Um, some people will have just simple things. Some people won't have anything at all. But this has been a big question that a lot of managers have had. Like, how do I change my profile photo in Zoom? So first, again, you're going to sign into Zoom. And then you're going to go to that navigation menu again that I showed you on top. Um, you're going to click on my profile. And like I showed you before, it'll open up a menu with your name on top. If you click on your name and then click on my profile, um, you'll be able to see um, a, a bigger um, page pop open. Now, you'll notice that on the top right, it looks like there's a little template icon um, for a photo there. That's where your profile photo will go. It'll go in a couple of places. But you'll notice at the top there that that little icon appears. And in the section with your name and personal details that are kind of down below, the same icon appears. And if you hover over it, you're going to see a little pencil appear indicating that you can edit the icon, which is what we want to do. So once you click on the pencil, um, you're going to be instructed to upload a photo. And this window will appear. Um, once you see this window, um, this change profile picture window, um, you're going to be able to change that picture. And again, if you have a folder available that's already got a picture that you want to upload, that's awesome. You're going to either drag and drop the file or you're going to click on choose files to upload your picture. And I personally like to use the EDC icon so that new people that have never met me before in a meeting, um, get a little bit more familiar with the, either the MSC program or the EDC um, logo, that brand, and quickly identify which organization that I represent. Um, my name is there, but it's kind of nice to see the logo associated with the organization I belong to. So once you choose a file, um, this window will appear. And there are a couple of things to note here. Up at the top of the window, um, it describes that you need to have a profile image that is in either a JPG, JPEG, a GIF or GIF, I never know how to say that one, um, or a PNG format. And you'll need something that's smaller than two megapixels or a file size of about two megabytes. So it kind of has to be a smaller image. Um, you can also note that it's one-to-one -one aspect ratios, so it'll be in a square format no matter what you do to it. So if you have an elongated photo that's vertical, um, you'll need to crop it down or it'll crop it down for you to that square format. Um, once you've chosen your photo, you can crop it. You'll notice um, the blue square around the bear here. And it has um, kind of cropping points right here. You can click on the, the little blue squares in any of the corners and you can hold it down and move it inward and outward if you want to, to, to kind of change the crop. You'll notice too, there's a bar down below with a minus and plus sign that can zoom the picture in and out of the crop area as well. You can change your photo too. Sometimes we, we choose photos and it'll upload here in the preview and we're like, well, I like that photo, but I don't like what it looks like in a square format. So maybe I wanna change it. And they make it really easy for you to just click on that change button on the bottom left, change the photo, click on a new file and it'll open it up for you in here. And then of course, as soon as you're done, you're gonna want to save the photo on the bottom right, clicking on that blue save button. So just to give you an example of what this looks like in a meeting, you can see that there is my new profile photo, my EDC logo right there. You can see our lovely Patty Schmuel chose a beautiful photo right there that she wanted to use for her Zoom profile. And then Mike doesn't have a profile picture and that's just fine. Um, the name still appears, um, whatever you defaulted your name to. And it makes it easy to identify people. I just kind of wanted to, to show you the difference there. So before I go any further, are there any questions on profile photos that anybody has? Anything in the chat? Uh, nothing from the chat so far. Okay. 
Sounds great. I'm going to go ahead and just keep moving forward. And now we're going to talk about adding Zoom backgrounds. Um, Zoom backgrounds are so much fun. Um, it's a way that you can really create an, uh, a fun virtual space for meetings, um, either internally, externally. Um, our EDC team uses a different Zoom theme for each staff meeting that we have. We meet bi-monthly and we have had every Zoom theme under the sun. We've, we've chosen uh, themes around like pets or holidays. Um, they threw me a surprise birthday party this year with fun birthday Zoom backgrounds. There's lots and lots of fun things that you can do with a Zoom background. And it really does help to kind of connect you with your team. Um, it does set a tone for the meeting. So, you know, if you have a specific topic, um, that you are focusing on for your meeting. Sometimes it's really nice to show visually what that topic is about. Um, you know, if you just had a training or something like that, um, you can create your own Zoom backgrounds in PowerPoint to illustrate those things or use others that you find online. It is a way to get to know each other better. Um, here at the EDC, we do talk about why we chose the Zoom background that we did for the theme that was chosen, and it um, helps to get to know your colleagues in a new way. And like I said before, there are thousands of free templates online. Um, there's hardly any place you can, you know, go anymore where you just type in free Zoom backgrounds and lots and lots of options will pull open. So something to be aware of is that the whoops the recommended dimensions for a Zoom background are 1,920 pixels by 1,080 pixels with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And basically what that means, the pixels are small units of color that when combined, they make up a much larger image like the one that you see here. And aspect ratio just defines units of width and length of an image. And so um, if it helps for comparison, this particular aspect ratio is the same default size of a widescreen PowerPoint slide, which is kind of the standard out there nowadays. So if you don't use an image with an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, you may see black bars on either side of the background image. Uh, Zoom will kind of adjust that for you, but it won't pull open completely on the screen. So likewise, the maximum file size you can upload to Zoom is less than five megabytes. So be sure that if you get an image from online, that it isn't any bigger than that or it won't upload to Zoom. Um, kind of in short, the more pixels an image has, the more memory it takes up. So I've even tried to upload slightly smaller size files that um, did not go through very well. So just know that super high resolution HD backgrounds are really nice, but they might take up a ton of memory. So just be sure to test it before you use it. For backgrounds and adding backgrounds, um, you'll notice that there is a menu bar in Zoom. Um, you can locate it. Sometimes it's at the bottom of your screen. Sometimes it's at the top of your screen. Wherever it's located, you're trying to find the stop video um, icon on the bottom left. And if you click on the little arrow that's next to it, you'll see a menu pop open. And what we're going to click on is choose virtual background. That's the one that we're looking for because we're wanting to change a virtual background. And what you'll see is some settings that'll open up. And you'll notice that there are three options for either virtual backgrounds, video filters, which are also fun and a whole other tech talk we can do later, and avatars. And today we're going to spend some time in virtual backgrounds and avatars. But right now, focusing on virtual backgrounds, you'll also notice that um, down below there, you can see a plus symbol. Once you click on that plus symbol, it's going to open another menu that says add image or add video. You can actually add short MP4 videos to your background so that your backgrounds move. They have some movement that just keeps looping over and over again. We're not going to go over that today. We're just going to add an image, but I wanted you to be aware that that's a possibility. So you click on add image. And your file manager will open up and um, you can see that on the left hand side, I go to my Zoom video backgrounds. You can see within that folder, I've got a wild amount of Zoom backgrounds in there that I've had a whole bunch of fun finding online. And I'm going to start, um, I'm just going to open up the Starship Enterprise. 
right there and you're going to want to click on open and once that happens you are suddenly on the starship enterprise it's pretty awesome um, you can see that the preview will show you what it looks like and if you want to change from that preview you can click on something else in your photo library. You'll notice on the right hand side down here, there is a scroll line. You can scroll up and down to see what videos or images you have in your virtual backgrounds library in Zoom. And you'll also notice that the Starship Enterprise has been added to my library down there in the orange box there. You can see that. Something else I wanted to show you again about aspect ratio. You'll notice that on the right and left hand side, are those black bars I talked about. This particular zoom image wasn't exactly 16 by nine. They're pretty close. And you can see the black bars that are shown on either side of the screen because it didn't fit and uh, fully meet the aspect ratio guidelines. So um, this is really fun. You would just click out of this and then you would see your avatar um, with the, the new background that you put on. Um, are there any questions about backgrounds before I go any forward or any further? Is there anything else in the chat, Jane? I don't see any questions for the um, background yet, but um, I do see Patty had a question about the profile picture. Do you want to cover sure. that right now or just at the end? Yeah, what, what's your question? She was just asking, Jane, do we always have to have that background app open for the picture to show? Um, for for meaning icons. Oh, for icons. Mm -hmm. Um, so meaning, do we have to have a profile picture or an icon for a picture to show on the background? I'm not sure I understand. The Sorry, question. the Zoom, the Zoom app. I've noticed if I go to a meeting and I don't have the Zoom app open, I don't have my picture. I yes, you definitely around that. Yeah, you definitely need to be signed in. Um, sometimes, you know, if the app is just kind of open and running, but you're not signed in, it'll still let you in, but you won't be signed in. Um, I've noticed that too. Just make sure that you're signed in if you have like a university account or a different, you know, free account that you're actually signed into it. And it should keep your picture on there. Um, but that that might take some troubleshooting. Um, I can look into that later and get back to you on that one, Patty. That's a great question. Any other questions? All that right. is the only one from chat. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thanks, Jane. Let's go ahead and move over to avatars. Now, um, if you've never seen an avatar, you don't know what it is. Um, it's just an image that looks like you or represents you depicted on a screen. Um, we often see avatars in places like video games, on social media. Um, sometimes they're in chat rooms and they can be human or animal, really anything that you like, depending on the program that you're using to create one. And you might be thinking, why on earth would I want to use an avatar in a professional setting? Um, there's several reasons an avatar might be a good option. Um, first and foremost, it is a pretty clever way to depict a different version of yourself or how you present yourself to others. So uh, it creates visual interest. It grabs attention, especially if you're the presenter of a meeting. Um, avatars are typically incredibly customizable meaning that you can choose the details to closely match the look that you're going for. Everything from hair color to, you know, what size of eyebrows you have. We'll go over that in a little bit here. And it's better to see a little bit of movement than just a static picture on the screen, especially if you're the kind of person that wants to turn off your video. Um, movement kind of tells the presenter that you're still engaged, that you're still part of the, the meeting, that you want to be there. And um, speaking of video, um, it is also better to see something on the screen than nothing at all. Um, lots of us that work in the virtual space uh, very often are kind of business on top and pajamas on the bottom. And sometimes there's just a day where you don't want to be on video, which is totally understandable. So as an avatar, if you want to send your avatar into the meeting room for you, um, it still presents a professional um, side to you. Um, finally, there's no lighting issues with an avatar. You can see in the picture above, that's me in reality. 
and my very harsh basement office lighting that I'm still trying to correct. Um, based on what's on my video screen or, you know, the lighting in the room, the lighting might be harsh and hard to really kind of clearly depict what I actually look like without that, that glare there. But an avatar will always have perfect and wonderful lighting, um, an uplit face and clothing and look very professional. There are drawbacks, yeah. of course. You know, You've got about nine folks. minutes, Jane. Okay, thanks, Brayden. There are a couple of drawbacks to avatars. Of course, you wouldn't want to make it the default forever. Um, you want to make sure that folks see you in person and they can connect with you. And avatars do move which is kind of fun, but they don't move completely. They're they're kind of just very gentle body movements instead of full body language that you could see um, when someone is actually in reality on video. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna play with avatars for just a little bit here. And um, to create one, again, we're gonna go down to that stop video icon. And instead of clicking on stop video, we're gonna click on that little arrow down on the bottom left-hand side. And the menu will pop up again. And we're going to choose avatar um, where it's highlighted there in blue. And when you click on that, some options are going to appear in the settings. You can see that my current avatar is selected and it's here. And if I wanted to, the default avatar settings go to animals, which are kind of fun. Um, Animals like foxes and cows and kittens and bunnies and things are represented here. But you'll also notice that you can't really edit them. They're just kind of default pictures. So if you're looking for an avatar in a pinch, you can definitely click on an animal and become that avatar for the space of the meeting um, where it's appropriate. You can see down below that I have created a couple of different avatars for myself for different settings. And the one that we want to focus on right now, um, again, there's avatars on your menu right there, highlighted in red, that red circle. What we want to focus right now on in creating a new avatar is this plus sign right here. We're going to click on this plus sign. And when we do, a default avatar template is going to appear. Now, as I mentioned before, there are so many options that you can choose from in changing your avatar. Um, you've got an option to change the skin color, the face shape, you can change the style of your hair, the hair color, you can change um, the shape of the eyes, the eye color, even your eyelashes. Um, your eyelash color can change. And then if you click on the arrow to the right, um, even more options pop open, things like facial hair and body size and clothing you can change. So there's lots to consider when scrolling through these options. And all you have to do, you can see down below this blue square that it shows you which face um, or what skin color has been selected. And you don't need to click on the done button each time you move from one space to another. What you're going to do is just focus on this menu that is highlighted in the red box and just pop in and out of each one of these things to change different things. And then when you're all finished, then you can click on done. So I'm just going to show you what a couple of these changes can look like. So here you can see I've clicked on hair. And there are a lot of different options for hair, everything from short to straight to curly to wavy. Um, you know, there's there's a uh, scrolling um, area right here. You can scroll down to see even more. It's so certainly not the exhaustive list right here. If you don't want any hair, you don't have to have hair. You can click on none. Um, you can see how that changed the initial template. And I decided that when I moved over to hair color, the avatar that um, I was creating, I wanted to have it have this pink color, kind of this mauvey pink color just for fun. So I adjusted that, then I went back to the menu again. And in the menu, I changed the eye color, I changed eyelashes, I changed eyelash color, just play around with it. It's so much fun. You can't break anything in here. So feel free to just play around and just see what you can come up with for an avatar. Again, face shape and very detailed things with, you know, noses, lips, those types of things are all options within the settings here. 
Here's eyebrows. I didn't want big bushy eyebrows on this avatar. So I thinned them out a little bit. You can see with this next one, I thought facial hair would be really fun to add to this avatar. And I matched it. I matched the color to the hair color. And you could change it to green. You could change it to pink. There's all kinds of options that you can change it to. And then clothing. Um, I thought this hoodie looked really cool. But there's certainly professional clothing you can see here. There's sweaters, there's hoodies, there's jackets, there's all kinds of options for clothing. And again, you can scroll down and see even more options. They also have options for head coverings, um, which are really great too, hats and such. Here is uh, my avatar with really cool sunglasses. And you can change those out, swap them out. Any one of these elements you can go in and edit and swap out at any time if you wanna change and switch it up around. Maybe you created an avatar that you really like, but you just wanna change the clothes to fit maybe the mood of the meeting or something like that. You can definitely go back in and do that and edit things as you like. So tons and tons of options. And again, when you're completely finished, you click on done and your avatar will appear. Um, so are there any questions about avatars? They haven't answered. You know, that's kind of the, the fast rundown of avatars. Any questions in the chat? I don't see any questions in the chat yet, but maybe people are just typing in. Sure, that's totally fine. Um, I hope you have a chance to go in and play with a lot of the Zoom features that are located in the meeting room, um, in your settings. There's so many possibilities in Zoom and lots I haven't even been able to um, cover yet to maximize the um, functions and the customization that you can do in here. It's really a lot of fun. It just takes time to come in and explore with it. Um, just by way of information, um, this is our last Tech Talk of 2023. Um, the goal of Tech Talks is to improve EMSC through technology, and starting in January of the new year, we will still be meeting every fourth Thursday at 12 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Eastern, to have lots of great trainings like this one. If you have any suggestions, like I mentioned before, for Tech Talk ideas, um, we want to help. We want to provide trainings that help you with your EMSC projects. Um, information about analyzing data, helping you with presentations and getting, you know, the word about pediatric readiness out to your advisory committees, to the community, um, anything to do with marketing communications, we're here to help. So please feel free to reach out to me at the email address listed below if you have any great ideas. I've heard from so many of you already and um, November and December are the times that we plan for the new year. So we're excited to bring you another great um, set of trainings. Um, we really appreciate you joining and visiting with us today. Please feel free to check out our website at emscdatacenter.org forward slash SP. That stands for State Partnership. Um, we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. We look forward to seeing you in the new year. And um, take care, everyone.